shutting down our garden today. We started off this year with very bare rocky soil and if you've followed us you've seen some of the successes we had this year with gardening. It was our first year here in Alaska during the growing season and I think overall things worked out very well for us which we are so grateful for. We also had some things that we learned and things that we're going to be doing ne differently next year. We are going to bring you guys along with what we are accomplishing today. First I wanted to show you guys our high tunnel and how that is looking right now. So it is right over here and if you remember us putting this together it is 12 by 36. We built it out of top railing and this poly that is meant for greenhouses so it should sustain winter just fine. I don't have any concerns about it. It worked out really good for us this year as far as temperatures and providing extra warmth to some of the plants that we most likely wouldn't have been able to grow if we didn't have them in that type of climate. Let's go ahead and head on in. So this really looks like a catastrophe in here and that's because it is. It is just all our plants that are dead. We are in the middle of October now so some of this stuff has been gone for quite some time and some of it we harvested not too long ago but we do need to go ahead and clean through this today since you can see it's pretty much just dead plants and twine in here. This year we grow cucumbers, tomatoes, peppers, zucchini, eggplants, corn, green beans, shelling beans, and winter squash in here. Next year, I plan to move winter squash, zucchini, and corn outdoors. I don't think that they actually need to be grown indoors. If we can do a little bit of low tunnels outside, that will help with spacing. My reasoning for that is because most of our squash did not do very well in here as far as pollination. So even though we had honeybees coming in, they just didn't pollinate and we actually had a really poor fruit set with our squash. 
that's a bummer. We usually like winter squash going into winter, but that's okay. Other areas we had makeup and great successes. We had wonderful pepper harvest, probably the best we've ever had, which is ironic because we're in Alaska and our tomatoes did great. One difference with our tomatoes was that they took a very long time to ripen. We are used to those ripening much quicker and we had to pull them off the vine when they were green still and let them ripen inside this year. Space wise, I think we pretty much maximized this high tunnel out. We had a lot of things even trellising over us and it worked out pretty well for the most part. We didn't have issues with certain things in here that self pollinate, so tomatoes and peppers, that wasn't a big deal. Our corn did do okay, but we did have some of the kernels or the silks not actually pollinate and we did end up with a little bit of spotty corn. I also think it grew way too tall for this high tunnel. One thing I forgot to mention was our tomateos. They grew past the eight foot tall that they were allowed and we may be moving those outside next year too. So we have about a four foot clearance at the back and we do plan to put in some shelving for seed starting as well as a wood stove. We're going to need somewhere to start all our seedlings since this year we did it in our cabin. And that was really hard for us because we live in a small cabin. So we're not gonna be doing that again. We're going to be doing them outside and seeing how that goes this next season. One other thing we are probably going to change next year is better trellising and support system in here. We do have a cable, which I was pretty happy with, but we had to use a lot of twine and twine doesn't hold up over the years. And we may also look into different pruning methods for our tomatoes as well. Let's head out back to the outdoor garden. This is the outdoor garden area. We have nine raised rows and that is not including two perennial beds that we have on the other side of the greenhouse and right behind me towards the road. Size wise, we were really happy with the amount of produce we got out of here. I definitely don't regret our decision to plant in the ground or in raised rows. In the past we've done raised beds, but this way I really think our yield and our production went up. A few things that we may be adjusting next year is how much of what certain crops we grow. We definitely grew too many of certain things and not enough of others. Herbs was one that comes to mind that we just grew an abundance of. I have herbs set aside for several years now because of that. And the reason that happened was because I know that most of these herbs will not perennialize here. So I wanted enough herbs. One thing that we grow way too much of too is greens. We always seem to grow too much of that, but the chickens do appreciate the leftovers. And one thing we're gonna be focusing on next year is even more of those main staple crops, which are carrots, onions, beets, potatoes, things like that, things that store and really serve us well throughout the winter months. One thing we need to account for is that we are going to bringing, be bringing most of our squash and our corn out here. So we are going to have a little bit less room. The plan is to put in a small orchard next year and put flowers over on a different part of the property. This bed behind me is one of our perennial beds. We have honeyberries or hascaps, and we also have a rose bush and a few raspberries. This is our other perennial bed and we have a lilac bush and the rest is all asparagus. And if you know about asparagus, they take several years to get to the point where you can actually eat them. You can see right now they're pretty scrawny so usually these will die back and you'd go ahead and prune them but since they haven't quite died back i'm just going to be putting mulch over them today coming back to the herbs two of them that should perennialize no problem here are chives and mint the rest are pretty much questionable and when i say that i mean a lot of them we are in zone three and a lot of these herbs are only rated for like zone five or six so we're pretty far off from that and I'm gonna try some things. I'm gonna try overwintering some inside. I'm gonna try mulching really thick and see if that works. My guess is some winters it may work, some winters it may not. We had an overabundance, so if I have to plant them every year, it's probably not a huge deal. But certain herbs like rosemary really benefit from getting older and mature each year rather than cutting them down every year. We have some stuff to harvest before we get started on our mulching today, so we are going to go ahead and get that done.
So we just finished up pretty much shutting down the garden or getting it ready for the winter season. It started to do a little snow mixture last night, so we finished up this morning. And what we first did was we went through and just chopped down any remaining plants and laid them down on the bed. In the past, I have moved all that out to a compost pile to let it break down over time. But what I have found with gardening is that it actually is fine to just leave it there. It just takes a little bit longer to break down. Nothing's really gonna be breaking down this winter because we're gonna be frozen. So what we first added to the beds was a layer of bark, just some bark that we had from that beetle spruce kill. And we also added some leaves that we had around the property. The next layer was horse manure that we picked up from a farm nearby. And the last layer is Timothy. And generally we like straw, but Timothy is more affordable around here. So it works fine. We've used it earlier in the season and it worked out really well. In fact, for the most part, everything grew pretty well this season. There was a few rows where we had a little bit of balances and things were a little slow to start at the beginning of the season, if you remember. Our gardening that we did this year is most comparable to lasagna gardening, which is, you know, there's more of a science behind it, but it's basically layering lots of organic amendments and over time that breaks down, encourages lots of worms to show up. That is something I believe in. I believe in no-till, so that means I don't want to disturb the soil. I want to let it be and just add amendments on top and let them break down how they naturally would. Being that we're in Alaska, it's gonna take some time, but again, things so far did pretty good this year. I was pretty happy with that. I was expecting things to not do as well since we were just getting started with our soil. So the plan next year is to go ahead and just add some spent barley on top of these rows. And we will also add maybe a little more soil. I don't know if we'll be adding more compost. I'll kind of play it by ear and look at what the soil looks like at that time. I'm feeling pretty good that we went ahead and got a little bit of a jump start for next year. It should make our lives a little bit easier. One other question I get a lot is about pests and if we have them or how we deal with them. And in general, we do have some pests but my best approach for that is actually to just focus on your soil health. Soil health is the key to it all. It's the key to everything. It's the key to the plants, it's their food for them, it's their home for them, you know, including the environment as well. But if you focus on healthy soil, you will almost always have healthy plants. And sometimes pests do come, but to me, there's no such thing as just a good or a bad bug. To me, they're all bugs and they have a purpose and a time and a place. So just focus on soil. It is a little disheartening sometimes when a slug eats your food or you come out and aphids are covered on your plant, but there is a balance with gardening and we've found the less we do and just let it be, it usually ends up being a good thing. One other benefit to straw is also that it provides a mulch for your ground. So over the winter, if you live somewhere where you get heavy rains, that can leach a lot of the nitrogen over the winter. And it's just nice to have a nice warm coating over that soil for the organisms in there. We have one more thing to do before we are completely shut down in here, and that is take down our electric fence. All right, so the electric fence worked out awesome for us this year. We had absolutely no problems with it. So what we're gonna do, since we don't need it over the winter, is we're gonna take down the charger, the solar panel, and we're gonna take the battery and we're gonna put them away in storage until we need them again next year.